traveling has been a big part of my life for as long as I can remember. I started exploring places in Europe since I was born in France and then quickly ventured further. At the start, it was just me and my mom, and then later with friends, and now with my wife. Whilst the destinations and company change all the time, there is one constant. I have always documented my adventures through visual content. Whether it was just stills taken with a disposable camera as a kid, or high resolution digital cameras today. And I think I have to thank my mom for this, as she always had a camera in her hand, teaching me how important memories are. As I film and photograph more and more over the years, I started developing a style without really noticing it, greatly influenced by the huge amount of movies that I was watching. I've always had the preference for landscape, quiet moments, and wide vistas. I feel lucky that today I can make travel a part of my job, being a freelance filmmaker and shooting around the world. When traveling, the main reason, most of the time for all of us, is to explore and enjoy a place, usually for the first time, and of course, the experience is the most important part, but traveling doesn't mean that carefully crafted images can't be achieved when on the go. There are many aspects of filmmaking, but cinematography is one of the more obvious and arguably the most important when it comes to travel videos. I've always tried to pay attention to the way that I capture images and travel videos is what got people to notice me in the first place years ago. So in this video I want to share some insights and tips on how I go about traveling and filming at the same time. I will talk about the gear I use, planning, how to quickly frame shots, energy and pace, and everything I do to create those videos. These tips are with personal travel videos in mind, but this doesn't mean you can't apply them to regular shoots. This is Florian from After Lens, and let's get into it. So first of all, planning. Before you even start shooting, it helps having an idea of what you actually want to capture. This will save you time and stress when you're actually traveling and later editing. Do you want to capture your landscape only? Do you want to include the people that you're traveling with? Do you have a specific look that you're trying to achieve? As an example, when I went to Iceland, I knew that I wanted everything, or most of it, on tripod. I had this idea of still frames from each place I visited, and that's what I did. On the other hand, for example, on my trip to New Zealand last year, I knew that I wanted something more rough, grainy and handheld. Location and gear. In my opinion, the gear depends on the location you're visiting. Remember that you will be carrying what you decide to take, and in my experience, less is more. As an example, when I travel for personal reason, I never take lights, monitors or even mics. I keep those for work assignments. If you're visiting cities and will film all day long, then a light camera lens combo, preferably fast, is probably best. I shot in New York, Rome, and Tokyo, just with the original BMPCC and a small zoom lens. No other accessories, just a camera and the lens. When I shoot landscapes, I tend to also pick zoom lenses 99% of the time because I need the range more than anything else. And I don't want to waste time changing lenses. I also prefer to use lenses that are weather sealed just in case the conditions get rough and IS when possible to help a little when shooting handheld. For me the best travel lens for Micro Four Thirds systems is the Lumix 12-35 2.8. It to EF or Super 35 sensor, I would pick the Canon 16-35 F4 IS or the 24-105 F4 IS, depending on your style and destination. Both offer good range, weather sealing and stabilization. They however lack the low light capabilities, but to be honest, these days camera are pretty good and shooting at high ISO is not an issue anymore. Obviously, depending on what system or brand you're using, the focal length might be slightly different. When it comes to cameras, as you know, I shoot most of my content on a BMPCC 6K now. Great dynamic range, flexible EF mount, plenty of resolution, and still fairly small to travel with. I would say though that the BMPCC 4K is a much better travel camera, and if travel is your main genre of shooting, then go for it. It is much lighter, smaller, and retains all that makes the 6K version a great camera. If you want to be able to take stills, then the EOS R is a great option with awesome autofocus and better weather sealing. 
I used it when I was in Antarctica when the weather got a bit intense. If I know that I will be hiking or walking a lot, then I will try to shoot everything handheld. That's when IS lenses come in handy. However, if we are driving around and have access to the car easily, then I will usually leave a tripod in the back of the car just in case when I need to shoot wide establishing shots for example. Don't make the trip about the content. One thing that I find extremely important is not just to travel for content. Traveling is about discovering places and not ticking boxes for YouTube or Instagram. There's a difference in documenting places and forcing moments. Of course we all have places we desire to travel to because we want to see a specific monument or landscape feature, but my advice is not to make this the only reason you're going. Traveling is meant to be enjoyed and remembered, not just shared online. In my opinion the footage looks more organic when it is captured naturally. Let moments unfold, and if you don't capture them, then it's okay. You still live them, and you were there. Composition Now one of the tricky part of filmmaking when traveling is composition. This is where travel and documentary content are quite close since you might not have control over the location and you probably also don't have all the time in the world to set up a shot. I suggest to work on instinct. If you have an idea and you think it looks good at first glance, it probably does. I tend to shoot videos the way that I capture photos. I like to have a minimalistic approach when it comes to a landscape and sometimes even when I shoot on the street. When shooting outdoors I like to film wide establishing shots of a place or view and hold the shots for about 6-7 to seven seconds. I apply this to all my travel content so I don't fill up too many hard drives but I still have enough to work with in the edit. I then focus and zoom on one or more specific feature, this could be a mountain, a waterfall, trees etc. I like to place a subject off center to split the frame sometimes for example or dead center to have a symmetric look. I often switch between the two throughout the same trip as you can see here on this footage from Hawaii. For cities I usually shoot wide and tight and not so much in between, that way I have two extremes and it helps when editing. When shooting near buildings, try to find lines and intersections. Compression can also be quite effective. I also like to use the rule of thirds. I find it very useful when moving quickly as it helps making decisions when it comes to composition. I also use this in Antarctica when trying to keep the horizon straight. As you can see from my work I shoot a lot of content of my wife from the back, not because it is trendy but because it invites the viewer to follow around and I have been doing so for many years. I also shoot at eye level a lot since I feel it looks natural and is quite immersive. I do of course, vary depending on the subject, but most of the time this is how I capture footage. Regarding aperture, I tend to shoot people at around 2.8 to f4 and anything landscape will be shot around f4 to f8, depending on how much light there is. I have also never really used autofocus when traveling, I prefer to use manual focus as I have more control and I actually don't mind the in and out of focus look sometimes. Energy and pace. Just because the internet is full of fast-paced transition videos doesn't mean that you have to. I always struggle to be immersed in a video when all I can think about is how heavily edited it is. As you probably already know, I like to shoot quiet moments and take my time. I want to capture the moment the way I see it. That being said, energy and pace are important. It is helpful to split your shots in different categories when it comes to movement for example. This can be done using handheld for some shots when walking, then put the camera down and shoot some more still frames. This can be done also using what you're capturing. You can follow a vehicle for example, or a person. When I was traveling in Italy, I filmed some shots looking up and spinning slightly, alongside handheld and stable shot to be able to break it down in the edit a bit. Drone shots are also a very good way to give your video something extra. It helps transitioning from one place to another, for example, or to establish locations. Another way to introduce a certain look or feel is to use slow motion. It can be quickly overused, but I found it very helpful when shooting handheld and it can make a simple shot much more interesting. If you're traveling near water, then it will definitely help the footage, as waves in normal motion can look a bit weird. Music choice will also greatly impact the vibe of the video. 
sunrise and sunset. When it comes to travel, natural light is usually the main source of light. I feel like shooting travel videos help me a lot when I now shoot documentaries, as you usually have to make do with what you have. In order to get the best light, shooting at sunset or sunrise will give you the best results. I prefer sunrise because it is usually quiet and you can get this blue hour look, especially in winter. I often get asked how I got some of my shots from a Japan video with so few people in it, and it is purely because I made sure to wake up very early on some days so I could film properly. Also depending on who you're traveling with, they might not want to wait for you all the time when you're filming. By waking up early you're allowing yourself some quiet time to film and can spend the rest of the day enjoying people's company and travel without having to think too much about how to capture the place when the light is too harsh. Don't forget to look with your own eyes. Something that I've always done, and it might sound a bit silly, is that during my travels I have always taken a few minutes here or there to fully appreciate what was in front of me. Even if I had a camera in my hand, I would just take my eyes off the screen and just look. Memories are great, but being in a moment is very important. I am lucky that my wife also shares the same passion for filmmaking, photography and travel, as we get to experience those places the way we want without compromising and find a good balance between content creation and regular travel. I hope this video was helpful to you and that you got something out of it. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.